Welcome to Visible Theology. I am Manny Benton, and today we have an awesome guest on. Um, I've been following his work for, I guess, about three or four weeks now, and um, it has really ministered to me. I think his work is very, very unique compared to some other Christian artists that you see on Instagram or on social media. Um, his name is Paul Mignard, and on Instagram, it's Sketchy Sermons. Paul, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I hope I didn't mess up your your, your last name. I didn't I forget to ask you about that. No, no. I mean, I think technically it's Minyard, but you you got Minyard. so close. I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in, man. Um, I wanted to start off with just asking you to share your testimony. You can go however deep or, you know, however much you want to give, um, if you're willing to go ahead and share that with us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate being here. Um, my testimony, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I was very fortunate, very privileged to grow up with, you know, two parents, you know, middle class household. Um, I grew up in Las Vegas, which was an interesting wow. experience. <laughs> so my dad was in the Air Force and we moved around. And when I was eight, we wound up in Vegas. So uh, that's where I was saved of all places uh, in 10th grade in high school. Um, I'd made some friends and, you know, got involved in church there. And it was, it was, it was kind of cool. I always call it like, like special forces church. Cause they were, they were pretty hardcore. Like I remember them mm. not having instruments. Cause it was like, oh, we don't, we don't do the syncopations. Cause it's not cool. You know, it was just this really, right. um, intense experience. Um, but from there, so I got saved. I joined the army. I kind of fell away a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I was really into this girl and I knew that, you know, she was, she was not going to have it if, if I wasn't <laughs> saved, if I wasn't like a true Christian, if I wasn't ready to, to step up. So amen, I kind of recommitted my life and, you know, went from there. That was gosh, 20, 23 years ago. I ended up marrying that girl. She's my wife now. We just celebrated, you know, an anniversary uh, for 23. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's been, it's been a wonderful experience. So um, you know, my testimony isn't, is, is I'm, I'm very fortunate that I wasn't brought from something, um, really damaging or, or really yeah. painful. Um, but you know, it's, it's been wonderful to be a part of something bigger, right? Like I, I you know, especially now with all the politics and all the stuff going on, knowing that that's like, that stuff is down here and I get to be a part of something that's up here, um, has been a joy. So, um, yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I love being a Christian. I love learning more about the Bible. I love learning more about what God's saying. Um, and especially now, just with the amount of people and influences that are on social media and all that. I mean, there's so many just interesting people and perspectives to, yeah. to listen to and choose from. Um, so it's been, man, I love it. I, what a time to be alive, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, you know, I, I have to ask this question because um, it's been a rough year. I think it's been an up and down year for, for everyone in America and the world. It's a worldwide pandemic. Um, also, there's been, you know, police brutality, um, just a lot of things that have gone on this year. Um, I want to ask this question from, from two ways. Like, first of all, how has it been for you personally? Secondly, has it inspired your art at all? Um, yeah, well, yeah. So to answer the first question, <clears throat> I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm a, a, you know, I do office work, right? So I'm a web yeah. developer. I own a really small company and, and we've been doing fine. So the only thing I've had to deal with is like, instead of going to the office, I get to stay home with my wife and kids, which has been good. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that's changed for me this year is just um, the empathy portion, you know, mm -hmm. cause it's like, it's really easy to kind of get in your routine and your life and, you know, the blinders come on. And I think this year really exposed, uh, you know, just how much other people are going through, you know, yeah. like, like even people in my community, I live in central Virginia in Lynchburg and yeah, like you said, with, with black lives matter, with the, with the COVID experience, with, um, you know, people in my family, either getting sick or, you know, losing their jobs or all this other stuff. It's been, it's been something else. So it's, it's made me empathetic. It's, it's humbling, you know, <laughs> it's really humbling to be like, Oh my gosh, why do, why do I get, you know, the fortunate opportunity to kind of avoid some of these things when friends or family don't. 
Nice. Um, so yeah, so that part of it. So, so yeah, so personally I'm, I'm doing fine. I, you know, things are great, but as far as like fueling art, it's really kind of, um, opened up the experience, right? Like there's just so much more going on than just, um, uh, you know, sketching nothing like a, a couple of years ago, you know, I, I've always kind of been an artist, but I never really did much with it. Right. So it was like when I was a kid, it was always drawing superheroes and dumb stuff like that. And then I was always kind of doodling. So, you know, I'm always drawing dinosaurs and octopuses and again, you know, kind of stupid stuff. Um, but this year, I think the thing that God really laid on my heart is like, there's just, there's more going on than that. Right. Like there's, there's, there's more voices in the world. There's more people, there's people that are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I'm just going to be sitting here sketching octopuses and superheroes, I don't, I'm not going to be a part of that. Right. <laughs> like I don't get to join in the conversation. Um, so just kind of branching out, you know, even because for a while I've been sketch noting my, my own sermons, uh, when I say my, my home church. So I go to, okay. I go to Thomas road here, but just kind of reaching out. Like I, you know, just local churches here, or if I see something interesting on Instagram or something like that, it's like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to listen to that. That's, that's how I, you know, found new, new life fellowship up in, up in New York. Okay. Um, you know, just this wonderful church and this great pastor and just, you know, a whole different experience from something you get down here. Right. Um, so it's, it, it's fueled in a way that I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I think people are kind of resonating with it a little bit more, you know, again, when I was just drawing dumb stuff, it's like, you get a bunch of likes, but you know, that's it. There's no, there's no connection. Nobody's really joining in on it. It's kind of like, all right, great. That's, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when you start talking about the gospel and you start talking about, you know, Jesus words, when you start kind of bringing in these other ideas, um, man, it's like, it's kind of encompassing. Like I find myself now, like, man, I can't wait to be done with work so I can you know, get back to this drawing stuff, you know, listening to more sermons, doing that. So yeah, as far as like fueling art, like, and, um, you know, because all churches are kind of forced to put their work online, yeah. um, it's really made a lot more available. I, I know a lot of churches beforehand were kind of getting there, you know, they were, they were starting to Facebook live or stream or whatnot, but now just this kind of mandate, like if you want to participate, you got to be online yeah. and it's opened it up to people like me, like, you know, there, there's so many available churches, but I can't physically go to them. I mean, even just here in our community, there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of churches. If I was going to go to each one, I mean, it would take me a decade to see them all. Yeah. Um, but now that they're all in line, it's like, man, I, it, it's almost like a buffet, right? Like use my Vegas analogy. It's like, I'm back at the Rio. Like, am I going <laughs> to, am I going to take from here or there? So it's, <laughs> it's been really yeah. good in that sense. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Cause I, I was going to ask you like, what, went into you deciding to use sermons as like your focal point in your art because I think that again is very very unique um was it like something like was that like your way of of writing notes when watching sermons or was it just something that you consciously sat down and said or intentionally said okay I'm going to just start sketching out sermons no, no, it actually started uh, the first part, like you said, I mean, I'd be at church and if I wasn't actually like writing down notes or doing something like I, I wasn't there. Right. So I'd be sitting, I'd be working on my to do list or where am I getting at lunch? And, you know, I, I hate to admit there was a few times where like all of a sudden the pastor's doing an altar call and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was sitting in the seat, but I, I, I wasn't there. Like I was <laughs> gone somewhere else. <laughs> and so I started um, taking notes, like I just had a little notebook and I would, you know, and, and I always kind of drew, so I kind of incorporated that a little bit. Right. Um, so, but I started posting it. I was like, oh, here's this, here's this thing that I drew mm -hmm. and, and people kind of liked it and whatnot. So I just kind of kept pushing it a little bit more, like refining it, like, okay, maybe, you know, at first it was really rough. Like here is exactly what I drew. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll clean it up a little bit. Um, and now I get to share it, you know, obviously on Instagram or wherever else. I know for our own, our home church, like we've got a Facebook group on there and I share them there. And, and just the, the response has been really good because people are like, either they didn't go to see the service or it's a reinforcement of what they heard. Right. Um, you know, it's just kind of a personal thing, but I, I, I found people really resonating with it. It's, it's 
what I've been calling tiny art, like, you know, big arts, like the, you know, if you draw a picture of Wolverine, you know, that's a huge audience, everybody's into it. Um, but with the tiny art, it was like, I don't have to be the best artist, but if I, you know, if the sermon, if the pastor talks about a Lamborghini and I'm able to like draw something and then like, oh, I added this Lamborghini in here, like people really seem to resonate with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just it just came from there, and then people would ask me like, "Hey, can you can you check out this service?" Like, "Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I'll I'll do it." Um, and really, it's just been fun, you know. It's it's like people's reaction to the sermons, you know. Once once they started tagging other people, and they were like, yeah. "Have you seen this? You got to check this out." I was like, "Okay, this is this is kind of resonating a little bit. Maybe I need to start going down this road." So I'm trying to branch out a little bit because it's, you know, I it, you know sermons are still my thing it's like I enjoy them I find them really fulfilling but more importantly I feel like I really get to hear you know what God's trying to tell me in any specific sense um, but lately I've been trying to branch out a little bit into different you know Bible stories like right now I'm kind of rolling through the seven prophetesses I can never say that word the seven female prophets of yes. the Old Testament <laughs> and even even revisiting that you know with a different eye because it's like you would hear it in a sermon note or you hear it at Bible school or even as a kid. Um, but then revisiting it more from an illustration standpoint, would really make them kind of pop out, you know, right, right. like the things that they did and, you know, whatnot. So it's been, uh, man, I feel like I'm just rambling. I lost the question, no, but, no. <laughs> but no, I've, uh, yeah, sermons are still my thing. I really enjoy them. And, and I feel, um, I don't know. I just feel like that's the, I, and I'm not a hundred percent sure of that, but I feel like that's where God's kind of pulling me. Like, this is something that, you know, that, that people seem to like, it helps kind of reinforce the message. And it's, and it's really just my, my way of being a part of it, you know, cause it's like, I'm not, I'm not on stage. I'm not, I can't play an instrument. I can't, you know, run the lights or anything, but it's, so it's kind of my way afterwards, like, Hey, you know, the pastor put in a week of effort to make this message. Um, you know, I'm going to put in a couple hours on Sunday to kind of reinforce it. And hopefully, you know, if somebody's able to pull some meaning out of it, then, then that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's really cool. You know, um, it's kind of like how I, you know, titled this visible theology. Um, it's, it's really my whole idea for this um, because I really feel like the visual arts can really help those who don't know Christ to, learn about Christ in a unique way and those who do know Christ to just grow in faith and, and grow in knowledge of who he is and of his word. And, um, you know, I think that doing that in art is like a great medium for that because, you know, as like Americans, I think as, as humans in general, we are very visual people. And, um, right. yeah, when we see something, it really like helps us kind of gain knowledge and understanding of things. And so, yeah, I, I yeah, you, that's one of the main reasons why I gave you a follow, man, is because that, that, <laughs> that stuck out to me. And I think it's it's funny when I when I asked you for three um um art pieces to send me, I was hoping that you would send me <laughs> <laughs> the one on college because that was the first one. And I, I, I purposely went to that, I zoomed in, I read it carefully because I wanted to kind of see what the theology on, on that was. And man, I agree with everything that that pastor said, and I, I appreciate you for uh, depicting that through art. Oh yeah, no, thank you. That one I picked that one specifically because it was it was challenging, but it was also refreshing, you know. To like, man, sometimes you know you struggle with something, and then God sends somebody into your life, and it's like, like here's how you really should think about this. <laughs> and it was just, it was like. It was like the light went off, like, oh my gosh, especially when he said, and I keep saying this quote all the time, like, like the church is not on the left or the right. Like it's something totally different, like that yes. should confound the world. And it's, uh, yeah, I picked that one specifically because I loved it because it was also not a message you would get in central yeah. Virginia necessarily. Not, not that, you know, we, there's not good pastors or not good preaching, but you get, you know, we get the experience from a, you know, a pastor that's deep in new york city you know and and just preaching god's word and it was it was really awesome so yeah no i totally agree i think you know on that tip i even tell that with my boys quite a bit like like their teachers are like graphic novels aren't aren't real books you gotta you gotta read real books right mm -hmm. and i'm like 
sometimes the graphic novels are better than the book, you know, yeah. like I, I get their point. Like they, you know, they're trying to just get them to read a bunch of words, but I feel like sometimes adults grow up and they grow out of that stuff. And it's like, no, like you, like, like these visual arts, exactly like you're saying. And in my case, it's more comic books. Like that's, that's kind of my style. It's kind of thing yeah. I'm into. Um, but it's like, you have these great stories that are, illustrated and you get like this other dimension of um like you were saying of understanding of what's going on and sometimes it makes it so much simpler because you get you get you know eight or nine pages of something but man you could get one page and it's like doo, 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 and it's illustrated in a way that's interesting and i don't know personally i always resonated more with that mm -hmm. you know i know as a kid yeah you know it's like i i read a lot but i've also i don't know i like i like a good I like a good picture book, you know? <laughs> I mean, and the Bible talks about having like childlike faith. And I, as I look at that sometimes and, and as a, as a worship leader, um, I'm often reminded of how, like how worship music can be like more walking theology. And it's the reason why, like personally, I'm very, I key in on like lyrics and stuff to make sure it's sound. Um, and, and then you have the art, which is more like a visible theology. But, um, you know, I feel like things that are made very simple, easy to understand, like art can be, um, I think that just really helps people just be able to grasp what is, is, is a complex book, the Bible. Um, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's a hard book, but it's, there's some parts in there that are a bit complex. And I think if, if yeah. it can be through art, you know, in a way that makes people understand, um, I think that would be very, very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally agree. I think you're 100% right on that. What's up, everyone? I just wanted to drop in real quick. I hope you guys are enjoying this first episode of Visible Theology. I just wanted to hop on real quick and say happy Veterans Day to all those who have served in our military. I am so thankful for you all for helping make America have so many freedoms that we do have. Um, my grandfather was, he served in the Air Force and also did a lot of work for the Air Force. So the Air Force has a very soft spot in my heart, but i um, very, very thankful for all of you all who have served our country. Um, also, I just wanted to also say that um, I apologize for my screen being so fuzzy on this first episode of Visible Theology. I hope to be able to um, make my screen less fuzzy in the upcoming episodes. Also, just a reminder, if you haven't already, to please like, share, follow us at Harbin Studio on Instagram, Facebook, um, and send some feedback. I would love to hear from you guys what you think about the episode, what you would like to see in these episodes. Um, I think that would be awesome to hear from you all and very helpful for me to kind of get an understanding on what you guys may want to see in future episodes or even some artists who you may want to see on these episodes. Um, I know one of my biggest goals with this um, would definitely be to at some point be able to do this in person and be able to have an exhibition kind of attached to this whole visible theology conversations with visionaries who are depicting biblical truths. Um, but I thank God for the technology that we have, especially during this pandemic where you can go on Zoom and meet with people like Paul Minyard and have these conversations. So um, just again, I hope you guys are enjoying it and stay tuned for part two. Welcome back to Visible Theology. Um, in part two, we are going to now get into the art. And um, I think you're going to really, if you haven't, seeing Paul's art, you're going to really love it and enjoy it. And, and really, I think you're going to learn something from it. Um, and hopefully you learn something from it. Um, and, and so this first piece, and we kind of touched on it in part one, is called God, Politics, and Church. And, um, and this, as I said, was one of the first pieces that I saw by Paul. And it really resonated with me um, as a person who I don't consider myself necessarily an activist or anything. But um, you know, if, if you guys follow um, my work at Avert Church and I went out podcast and you're familiar with our racial repentance series and we talk a lot when we have talked a lot this year about um, politics and, and where we as Christians should, should fit in that. Um, and also 
um, you know, just the racial issues that have gone on, which I think has kind of been tied to politics this year and, um, and often in general. So um, I want to get into the art piece, but I asked Paul first, if you didn't mind if I um, read the scripture and where, where the uh, pastor, um, Pastor Rich Villados, is that how you pronounce his name? I think so. I was, I was trying to avoid it because I, I actually don't know how to say his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> where he came from in, in this sermon. And he came from 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through 17. Um, I'm re reading from the Holman Christian Standard Version. And it reads, Now I urge you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all say the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, and that you be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers, my, be by members of Chloe's household, that there are quarrels among you. What I am saying is this. Each of you says, I am with Paul, I am, or I am with Apollos, or I am with Cephas, or I am with Christ. Is Christ divided? Was it Paul who, crucif crucified, who was crucified for you, or were you baptized in Paul's name? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Cephas and Gales, so that no one can say you had been baptized in my name. I did, in fact, baptize the household of Stephanus. Steep Beyond that, I don't know if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with clever words, so that the cross of Christ, so that the cross of Christ would not be emptied of its effect amen all right amen. paul you want to you want to uh kind of break down this art piece for us yeah so this one um this one hit me at a time where i did i i felt like i was politically homeless almost you know like i like man everything's gotten crazy i don't know what to think of anything and then i came across pastor rich on twitter of all places and and i don't remember the specific tweet but i was just like well i guess i'm listening to this whole service and this thing just man the way he broke it down and the way that he approached politics from the bible and not you know, from his own gains, you know, I feel like there's a lot of times where the church is kind of intermeshing itself with politics. That's, I, I don't know, to me, it always felt a little like, oh, man, I don't, I don't think we should be here. So he gave voice to this feeling that I had and laid it out in a way. And there's so many parts of this sermon that I wanted to put in here. Like, I feel like it's pretty crammed already, as it is with content. Yeah, you know, I think I put it in my notes, but he, he at one point he had replaced in the in the verse where he was like, "Was was Trump crucified for you? You know, were you baptized in the name of Biden?" Yeah. Um, and it and it almost gave me like a freedom on how to feel about this stuff, and and kind of like I was saying before, you know, it's like I, I don't want to be pigeonholed or left or right, like like mm -hmm. as brothers and sisters, it's like we we need to be above this, like yeah. this is this is our home here for a little while, but our treasures are elsewhere. Um, you know, so, so in going through this, these are the seven points, the seven marks of the faithfulness. And I love sermons like this that actually give you a framework to operate in, um, you know, the way that he kind of laid it out, you know, especially as, as far as politics presented this unique and humble way to approach each other, even, yeah. um, and man, I just, I really loved it. And Pastor Rich was very kind. He, he um, shared it, you know, on, on his social media platform. And it was, it was kind of a big one for me, but, you know, it's just, it was kind of a, an illustration of just unlikely circumstances. Like, I, I don't know how in the world I would ever would have found his church or him otherwise, but you know, it's like you, yeah. you see a tweet from a random person and all of a sudden you're drawing <laughs> a whole service for him. Um, so no, I, I really like this one. Um, you know, it just seemed to come together at a time when I think it needed to, and it, and it seemed to resonate with a fair number of people. So yeah. I was, you know, really happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love this part in it where it says, if any Christian fits neatly in a political party, that Christian does not fit neatly into the kingdom of God. God transcends all political parties. That That's amen. To yeah. That. That's an amen to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I love that so much, especially I mean I'm I'm here in the south, you know, people want to mm -hmm. 
kind of like I was saying, they're like intermingling. There's just like almost to the point of idol worship with some candidates. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. oh, it just feels something feels wrong here. This is not right. <laughs> what we should be. We should be united. You know, the Bible tells us we're supposed to be known by our love, not not by who we align with here on the earth, so to speak. So, um, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, like I said, I had I had so many notes on this one. I probably should have published when I do these, like when I'm going through them, usually I'm taking, you know, I do it on my iPad. So it's all digital. Um, but anytime they say something, it's like, all right, let me write that down. So I might put that in there. And I just had a full page. So it was like, oh, man, OK, I can't <laughs> I can't fit all of this on here yeah, <laughs> or else yeah. it's just going to be a big outline. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one was a hard one to whittle down. But yeah, no, it was. Yeah, I thought I thought that one was a an, an excellent excellent piece, and and I love, I guess the sermon. Um, this this coming from First Corinthians, I think this is an awesome place to uh, to preach this topic from. Um, just the line that Paul says is Christ divided. I think that is just that's a powerful line right there when you think about it, because like he's talking about pretty much like. Like just just think about like is Christ divided by by denominations? Is he divided by political parties? He came to die for all people, um, for all men, all women. And you know, I think sometimes we can kind of box our views in like this one box. And like if everybody believes in this thing, like this is this is our clique, and we're going to follow right. these people. You know, and uh, and, and it can be a little troubling. Um, you know, especially like we've seen it a lot this year in the, in the political climate, as we just talked about, just like the just the whole climate that 2020 has been. So, um, oh, yeah, this, this was perfect for this time. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was it one for me. I mean, like I said, God, God reached out on this one and <laughs> somehow came together through him because I wouldn't, you know, like I said, I would have never I had no idea who this pastor was. I had no idea what church this was. And yeah. And it was great. So I still have, he's got two more sermons um, that I've got on the list to get to. I've just been, just been busy, but I did this one and another one. And um, he, he's got great points in each one. The one that I didn't cover in this one that I wanted to do separately is the, I think it was like the, the domino effect of political enmeshment. And he kind of breaks mm -hmm. down how, like, when you criticize a person on their political beliefs, it criticizes their you know, how they make decisions, which criticize that, you know, any way that people yeah. take it so seriously, like a critic, like a criticism of their political beliefs is a criticism of their salvation in Christ. Yeah. And I don't think I'm saying it right, but it was such a, such a way to see like, okay, like this, this gives me some understanding that people aren't, you know, when you're debating or talking to people, they're not, it's not like facts, right? It's not like, mm -hmm. oh, let's, let's talk about facts. And then whoever has the most facts wins. It's like, yeah. Well, I got these beliefs and I'm, I'm willing to, you know, die for them. And it's like, right, you know, right. and, and the way he talks about it and especially here, like, like is Christ divided? Like, no, we're not like, we can't hate each other over this. This is not, right. <laughs> this is not biblically correct. What's going on here in a Amen. lot of cases. Amen. Now this next piece, four letter words, sin. Um, I also want to read from, from this too, but I'm going to just read. Um, from is First uh, John um, verses five through ten, and it reads: Now this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you: God is light, and there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we are lying and are not practicing the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Amen. Mm. Paul, can you Man. break down this one for us also? Yeah, so this one was interesting. So this pastor, Brian, he reached out to me. I uh, Again, I'd never heard of them. I'd never heard of him, their church. And he was like, hey, we got this series going on. Would, would you mind looking at it? Maybe you can make some sketch notes. And I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
and, and this one was funny because the first one so so i usually come into these and i don't you know i don't know what's happening i, I try not to necessarily look at the notes ahead of time i just want to kind of get it in real time right. and the first one wasn't this one it was the one like two before it was like four letter words hell today we're talking about hell and i was like oh okay <laughs> so I, I guess we're jumping in the deep end here yep. <laughs> like, we're going right to it um but this one i picked out kind of too is an illustration of how to make friends on social media because brian and I, we've never met each other we don't we don't run in the same circles but we've kind of been like internet pals okay. you know through all this you know two people just preaching the message trying to get Amen. things going and whatnot and no i just this one i loved the you know again kind of that same message this humble like like look we're all sinners we've all got problems um but i've really been impacted this year you know, mainly because of politics, but it's like as as Christians, we don't have the luxury of of pushing people away necessarily. We don't have the luxury of like, mm -hmm. like, oh, I know right and you know wrong. It's like, you know, you read stuff like this, like it's biblical. Like, yeah. no, 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 no. This is <laughs> this is not how we talk to each other. Um, and I always loved his his quote, you know, it's this relational excellence. And yes. you know, I know, I know the Bible says we're supposed to be known by our love. And this is one of those things where it's like, man, I don't. I don't think Christians have this yet. I don't think we're there. You know, yeah, I think yeah. other religions get, you know, they get pigeonholed for, um, you know, like Catholics or, well, I don't, I'm not going to go into it. It's, <laughs> I don't want to be all controversial, <laughs> but, but they get, they get stereotyped. Right. Absolutely. And it's like, man, I, I, I would love if Christians were stereotyped as like, man, they're kind of intense, but you know what? Like if you make a Christian friend, like that's a true friend or, yeah. you know, if you, if, if you get two true Christians married, like that's a real marriage, like, man, it, it holds up. Right. Um, so no, I, I love the message on this. And, and really I love just the, the story. It's like, here's a guy I never met. Like we're now kind of buddies. Like, yeah. I, I think that's the promise of social media that doesn't get, that you don't see sometimes, you know, right. connecting with people that you, or, or even like you and me, yeah. like we don't know each other i don't you know and then yeah. all of a sudden it's like hey we kind of appreciate each other's work we're able to talk to each other right. um but you know we're, we're united in christ and we're able to to converse and, and get together and i'm like man that's the hope this is it, like it's happening like this yes. is real like <laughs> amen amen yeah no I, I love this piece um you know just just the whole idea of just god being light and and you know i think as you mentioned, like this year and in general, I think as Christians, we can kind of get into this thing of um, being super uh, judgmental. And so like there is like mm. a there's a there's a there's a righteous judge, judgment and then there's um, a judgment that is not of God and not of shouldn't as Christians that we should not use. And um, and I know for myself, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Enneagram at all but, a, li um, a little bit but yeah so so i'm kind of like i'm where well, i am a type one which is considered more of like a perfectionist but like the downside to that is like resentment and um and mm. so for me this year i have had to battle against a lot of that that feeling of resentment of um seeing people like on social media you know, writing things that are crazy and, and, and stuff. And, and I've had to stop myself from, you know, that the word that we've heard a lot this year, cancel, canceling brothers and sisters in Christ um, for right. their beliefs on one, one, one area or another. And, um, and I have to be reminded always that, that God is light and God is in us. And therefore we hold that light. We should be light bearers of Christ. And so we should be going into dark areas, carrying that light, shining that light in, in, into dark areas. And, and instead of being the ones that are like, oh, you non-Christian, you're doing this, that's, that's wrong. You know what I mean? Right, And, and instead, yeah. speaking into that with truth, with love, and, and bringing that true light of Christ, because I, I believe that's, that's what I read that Jesus did in the, in the Bible. Um, he 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 walked with love and he walked in truth and he walked with grace and mercy and i think that's what we have we need to have as christians as well yeah, yeah no i i couldn't have said it better 100 percent. amen all right so now this last one season of the soul week three um this one um 
I didn't see the pastor's name on it. Did you have the pastor's name for this one? This is uh, Pastor John Dupin. Let me see. Do I? Okay. Yeah, it's in there, man. It's on the I left. I see it. So I see this... it. I see it. Yeah, I was, I was running <laughs> out of space on this one. <laughs> like, I got the Waymaker Church, like, way down there in the left corner. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was running out. But this one is good, too. Um, it, I, I'll, read, I'll read this first um, um, line, one of the main lines in this. It says, it ends today. Don't choose religion. Don't choose rebellion. Choose the Lord today. What a proclamation there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Th this was an interesting one. And the reason I chose this one, kind of kind of like we were talking about earlier, like that, like big art versus tiny art. Um, this one was a couple that had been through some stuff, right? So um, infidel, like they, they got kids, infidelity, you know, just wow. all these issues, just this giant wedge kind of driven into their life and their marriage. Yeah. Um, and they were talking about how they how they came out of it, right? So how they were able to you know, stick with it, you know, not, not get a divorce, not give up, you know, like they were truly at the end and they were able to, to reverse around through the grace of God. Um, you know, and, and, and they kind of talk about their way through that, like how they had to go through it. Um, you know, and the thing that really stuck out to me on this was number one, their openness, you know, I think, sometimes especially in church culture like everything's kind of kind of silent and hush hush and then yeah. you find out about things after the fact like oh oh so and so got divorced like i, I didn't even know they're having problems you know and it's yeah. and this couple was willing to get up in front of everybody and you know kind of kind of lay it all out um in this really transparent way but um i ended up sending them a print of this one Cause I, and the, and the father reached out to me. He's like, man, I really appreciate you doing this. And, and that was just, I don't know. That was one of those like confirmations. Like, I think I'm doing the right thing. Not, not for my own, like, you know, adulation, you know, it's like, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't necessarily want to do this for the pats on the back, but every now and then you, you do one of those. And it's like, you can kind of tell like, man, I think this, I think this hit a little more than, than another one. Um, so this one, not only did I like the message, um, but just like the whole, the whole experience doing it, kind of, kind of seeing that, seeing them being raw, seeing them being focused or open, you know, seeing that, that they got through it and, you know, were able to repair their marriage, you know, the, the message from God, but, but more importantly, just this, um, I don't know, just being, able, just to be a part of that. Right. Like yeah. it was one of these situations where I guess, I guess I kind of inserted myself because nobody was like, Hey man, can you come here and draw this sermon? <laughs> you know? <laughs> And it was like, I got to be a part of this experience, you know, just by, just by drawing some pictures. So this one, this one was, has been pretty humbling to me because it was just like, all right, man, I, I can, I don't know. This, this is where people first started calling it a ministry. Like, oh, I love this. Yeah. I love your ministry. And it was like, yeah. oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm drawing pictures in my basement. I didn't, I didn't know this was a ministry, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and it, it kind of, you know, really kind of brought that to light. Like, okay, maybe, maybe God's saying something here. So I don't. I don't know. So that so this one personally, you know, meant meant a lot to me to well, to be a part of. Yeah, praise God for that, man. You know, again, I just I think it's awesome what you do and and what so so many other Christian artists do because, you know, and they may not even realize it. Like you said, um, when they're when when they're depicting things that are biblical and stuff, but um, how this one was super personal for you, um, just the art that that you guys depict through um, from the Bible and from, from sermons and from what have you, it, it really does resonate and, and it, it's really helpful, you know? And so for, for this couple, I think that's awesome um, that they were transparent and that you were able to illustrate that in a way that really, um, that really touched them um, because that's what, that's what visible theology is all about to me and yes uh, <laughs> yeah 100 percent, right <laughs> yeah yeah so i i love it man i love it yeah well, oh paul, thank you thank you yeah well paul i uh i really appreciate you coming on man i have really enjoyed the discussion and um and and hopefully you know down the road when we're continuing doing these these episodes i can have you on again maybe and uh and kind of break down a few more pieces yeah, no, absolutely. Anytime. So like, like I, I don't know if I said earlier, I'm trying to put, put the gas a little more on this. I mean, it's really been, it's really been 
you know, uplifting for me to, to be a part, to have, you know, I don't want to call it a ministry yet, but to, to be able to, to join in these sermons in an active way, yeah. instead of just kind of sitting there and letting it wash over me and then forgetting about it to, to be able to, to join in on a sermon or something else. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm, you know, if, if you want to have me on back down the road, I'm a hundred percent on for it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I appreciate it, man. Is there anything else you want to share with us uh, before you um, log out? Um, anything you're working on? Um, feel free to share your social media handle. Yeah, so um, I'm on uh, primarily Facebook and Instagram at Sketchy Sermons. I have my website, sketchysermons.com. Uh, for right now, everything I do, I make totally available on the website. You can get either the high quality image or a high quality PDF and download it and print and do whatever you want with it. Um, so that's, that's part of it. I try not to have a lot of paywalls or anything. You don't have to provide an email or anything like that. Right. Um, no, you know, I don't, I don't know what's coming up next, you know, to be honest right now, I'm, I'm, I keep telling my wife, I'm stacking the bricks. Like I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not sure where this is going necessarily. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of enjoying the journey. I'm just, you know, praying and kind of see what God wants to do with this and, and what he wants to do with me. Um, and you know what, if this is it, if I'm just posting pictures on Instagram for the next four or five years, like that's fine with me. It's been, it's been really nice. I've been able to meet some really cool people. I've been able to, you know, like you been able to talk to some people that are doing some interesting things. So it's, uh, it's been wonderful. So yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the social media sites. I'm on, um, my website. You can contact me through there if anybody has anything. And like I said, most of the stuff is, uh, freely available. Uh, if anybody has a sermon that they want sketch notes, let me know. Uh, I get requests all the time where people are like, Hey man, can you check it out? And you know, I've just got a schedule and I, I, I usually can't get to it right away. <laughs> There's a lead time, but, um, at some point, yeah, I'll totally check out your church and, um, yeah. do a sketch note. So, yeah, yeah. So our, our Avert church, um, hasn't quite launched yet. We, um, because of the pandemic and everything, we were supposed to actually launch September 20th. Um, and oh, wow. Of- we were going to launch inside of a school. And so like that wouldn't have happened, but, you know, we thank God we've been blessed with a headquarters space and we're also being blessed with a, a place to launch prayerfully in March. Um, but uh, I actually, I sent um, who co hosts with me on our one out podcast, Pastor Nick Oliver, who's the lead pastor of a Burke church. I sent him some of okay. your work and, and he loved it, man. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be reaching out <laughs> to yeah, have you maybe yeah. uh sketch a sermon or two because we're we're all about that avert we love like graffiti stuff we love art like visual stuff we're, we're really into to creative things yeah. oh man no that's beautiful yeah i'd love to whenever whenever you launch let me know I'd, I'd love to be a part of it that'd be awesome absolutely absolutely well everyone i appreciate you all for joining us um i hope you come back next time i hope you learned something and enjoy uh this 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 first visible theology series episode don't know quite what to call it yet. i don't think it's a video podcast or just a <laughs> a show i don't know yet but we'll we'll just we'll call it a, a series episode or, or an episode so uh hope to see you guys next time